Do you know about the hidden risks of owning rental properties that most people overlook? These can make what was a home run investment into a money pit with big losses. I'm Susan Elliott, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at four hidden risks in rental property investing that can make your returns plummet if you don't know about them and mitigate against them. Now, don't worry, there's a solution. I'm also gonna go over ways that you can reduce and mitigate for these risks and still invest in real estate state without the hassles and headaches of being a landlord and better protect yourself against potentially massive financial losses. And I'm going to tell you the story of how a tenant caused $70,000 worth of property damages to a property. Ooh, stick around. So we've over sensationalized real estate investing, the massive returns from just a few rental houses or the simple strategies anyone can do, even with little to no money. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of wealth building potential and power in investing in real estate. It's what I do and how I am investing for my financial independence future. But I think that we've overplayed the simplicity of investing in rental properties. And we don't talk about these big risks that can really make or break this type of investing. I've changed how I've leveraged real estate in my investment portfolio over the last five years because of what, what I've learned from managing rental properties. I started by buying a couple of rentals, thinking I would scale up every year, become a little rich girl real estate mogul boss lady, or a rich mama boss lady, more like it. But my experience has genuinely changed the way I use real estate, and I wanna help you learn more about it too. So here are the four big risks that no one talks about in real estate investing that I've learned from my own experience or seen firsthand. And I can almost guarantee that no investor thinks about the cost of number three, so make sure you stick around for that one. Then we'll look at ways to minimize this risk so that you can keep building your wealth with real estate investing. First, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. It helps me know what content really helps people out there. Thanks. Okay, first, let me tell you the story of the $70,000 bill that a friend of mine, Annie, got from a problems that a tenant caused. Now, this is a call that sort of changed everything for Annie and her own investing philosophy, and it was from her property manager. And it started by saying, Annie, are you sitting down? Ooh, not something you wanna hear your property manager say. So the short story is here that a tenant blocked up the sinks, blocked up the tubs, and turned on all of the faucets in the, the apartment. This was one apartment and just a building with just six apartments. Now, of course, it flooded that whole apartment. Lots of damage, lots of drying that apartment out, remediation, all kinds of repairs. But what it also did was flood the two apartments next door to it as well. This meant that three of the tenants were out. They had to fix and do repairs on all of these. It took months and months and months to repair these units. Annie was on the phone with insurance people, with remediation, with repairs, with contractors, with property managers, everybody. And it ended up costing her at least $70,000. Now, I get that this is the worst case scenario, but I think that this probably happens more often than most people realize. Major repairs like this can be a huge risk to smaller rental properties. We're talking single family residences, duplexes, triplexes, even this sixplex that my friend Annie owned. Massive repairs are no joke. This is the first form of sort of hidden risk in rental property investing. Okay, second risk is managing contractors, which is really anyone you need to hire to be able to help you maintain that property. This could be in the form of yard work or repairing a roof or fixing a plumbing issue or doing a bigger renovation like in a kitchen or adding on a bedroom. These workers can often be really hard to find and even harder to manage, keep on schedule and on budget. These are skill sets that most rental property investors don't really have or a network that they haven't had the time to build up. Some, like my husband and I, end up doing this work ourselves, which leads me to risk number three. But before I do that, if this is triggering any sort of landlording horror stories that you have, please comment with those in the section below here. I really love reading those. Also go ahead and like this video and subscribe to our channel while you're down there. Okay, risk number three is your time and your mental health. People do not factor in these costs 
at all when they're thinking about investing in rental properties, even when they're thinking about investing in out of state rental properties, right? Where you're hiring a team, a property manager to be able to basically do that stuff just like Annie did, right? Most of us are investing so that we can reach financial independence and have the flexibility to not work anymore. We're not investing to do more work, in other words. Not enough people talk about the real-time investment it takes to managing a rental property or managing the property managers that manage your fleet of rental properties. And they also don't think about the stress it requires. I know that when I have a tenant vacancy, for instance, it's a huge stressful time for me that weighs down while I'm doing my other job or my other work or trying to be a mom and raise a family and play with my kids, right? That weight is something we don't often quantify or talk about with rental property investing. I self-manage the rental properties that we still have in our portfolio and I have to take care of everything. That means like the whole accounting business side of things. I have to make sure the tenants are happy. I have to manage any other contractors that are coming on, the yard work, all of this stuff. and fill any vacancies, which is the worst time of these cycles, right? I mean, maybe I have a tenant in there for two or three years, but I have to find someone new to come in when that person leaves. Sometimes I have to manage the repairs that happen in between those tenants. I have to advertise and look for them. I mean, this is a huge weight on my shoulders and work that I just don't want to be doing anymore, quite frankly, especially on my weekends when it's precious family time or adventure time. Okay, the fourth risk that people don't talk about is vacancy. Now, some people think about this as they factor in their deal analysis when they're buying a new rental property. And this is really impactful in these rental properties that have a single tenant, a single family residence, or even a duplex or a triplex where there's only one or two tenants in there. These tenants cover all of the expenses of your business, of your investment. That includes the mortgage, the insurance, the taxes, any repairs, any property managers that you're hiring. Now, when those tenants aren't there, when their unit is vacant, you are paying for those costs. Now, most of us factor in some form of loss due to vacancy in our deal analysis to be able to make sure that this is gonna work, which means that slowly over time, you're gonna acquire a capital balance to be able to technically mitigate against the loss or not having rental income for that month. But let me just tell you, if this goes unexpectedly into one or two or three months in multiple units at the same time, kind of like Annie's story, right? You're quickly gonna reduce your cash flow properly for the whole year on that. That's a huge hit to your returns. Again, like I said before, the months where I don't have a tenant in place are some of the most stressful in my life. So vacancy is a loss in terms of a real cost or a loss to your return, but it also increases that mental health factor of stress in managing these rental properties. Okay, so how do you reduce these risks and still invest in real estate? First. For any risk caused due to a tenant issue, the way to mitigate this is to simply have more tenants in place in something and in investing in something like an apartment building or a hotel. Now I know what you're thinking, what? Me invest in a hotel or a big apartment building? Who am I? Right? I would have said the same thing five or six years ago, but this is actually a lot more possible for investors like you and me than I had thought previously. It's in the form of a type of investing called passive real estate investing in syndications or group investments. These are commercial real estate assets. They get fantastic returns. And the best part is that they leverage expert teams who have these businesses dialed in. This is where I've pivoted all of my real estate investing. And honestly, I'm not looking back. Instead of putting my money that I've been saving up that would have been for a down payment on a new rental property, I'm putting it into one of these group investments. In fact, I'm a proud owner of an apartment building outside of Phoenix, three st self storage facilities all across the country, two hotels in Kentucky, and a really fancy apartment building in Orlando, Florida. Again, if you had talked to me just five or six years ago and told me that I would have investments in all of those diversified assets across the country, I would have thought you were nuts. I'll link to a video that talks more about this investing strategy if you want to learn more, but also check out the description below. I have a link to a free seven day passive real estate investing 101 course that we offer. Again, we don't offer courses. We're not selling these by any means. This is really just helping more people learn about this because not enough people know about it. So check out that link below. 
While you're down there, go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. So since these properties aren't relying on one or two tenants to be able to cover those expenses, the risk to be able to lose all of your cash flow for the whole year is a lot lower in this case. You've got many tenants that are there covering the cost. Something really big and major would have to happen if suddenly you lost one quarter of your cash flow coming in from rental income, right? In a 200 unit apartment building, you'd have to have like 50 people move out at one time. That just doesn't typically happen. Okay, this takes care of the vacancy risk and also a little bit of those repairs risk, right? You're repairing units one by one, not the whole facility at one time, typically. The next way I mitigate these risks is making sure that I'm making investments with teams who have an asset manager, like Steven. Steven's great. Steven is the manager of the property managers. He's the person who's looking at the performance and operation on a number of properties. He's basically keeping everyone there in line and on budget. Having an asset manager look over my properties is fantastic. He's like a really, really important extra layer of protection here. He keeps the property managers in line. He vets any contractors. He checks in on the work. He's basically the one that just, like I said, making sure everything's happening according to schedule. Speaking of contractors, this scale of investing also often requires that a contractor team is dedicated to this very specific property. So you're reducing that risk of like trying to find someone to do the work at all the time. There's contractors that only really work on this building, right? Kind of full time. They're making sure things are running smoothly. Okay, finally, the biggest risk here that you can mitigate is that this type of investing requires zero hours from you. It is fully passive. Now, the words passive and real estate investing haven't really gone together in the past because it's not not passive investing. And don't get me wrong, there's a little bit of work that goes into this too, just in you learning about it, which you're doing right now, right? So on the front end, I have to vet the sponsorship teams. I need to, these are the, the, the people that are running the deal, the experts behind it. I need to ask things like, do you have a Steven? Do you have an asset manager on your team, right? What does your track record look like? Have you done this before in the same market and similar markets? There's a bunch of questions that I can ask to see if that team knows what they're doing. And then I'm also gonna learn like how to vet potential opportunities and do they fit into my investing goals, right? So, but as soon as I get that down pat, right? I pick a few sponsorship teams that I like it's basically rinsing and repeating. The second I make my investment, I literally do zero work. I can literally go to Costa Rica for three months with my family and not worry about a tenant causing an issue that I'm not able to manage. Speaking of which, I really wanna to go to Costa Rica for three months with my family. If you've done that before, comment below and let me know how it went. All right, if you're interested in more, again, take a look at that free passive real estate investing course down below in the description and be sure to comment those landlord horror stories. I really will read them and I love them, trust me. And we'll see you next time, thanks.